Jack, I mean, cut the lady some slack. 24 years is a long time to kind of just be holding up your ego. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I'm back with another book review. Today, before we get started, I'm trying something a little different. Instead of making this request at the end of the video, I'm gonna make the request at the beginning of the video for those of you who may not be watching the entire video. Just I'm asking you, if you haven't done it yet, to make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And I wanna thank everyone who has already subscribed. And once the review is complete, if you like what you heard, why don't you give me a thumbs up? And leave me a comment also, and let me know what you thought. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the book that I'm going to be reviewing today, and it is called Distant Shores by Kristen Hanna. Distant Shores. So Distant Shores. The book, it's interesting because the title, it, it kind of, um, it alludes to two different things. It was kind of a clever play on words because the story is about a couple Elizabeth and Jack Shores. So that's their last name. And they lived in a beach town that has Shores. Get it? Pretty clever, right? Well, in the story, uh, Elizabeth and Jack, they have been married for like well over 20 years. They have uh, two daughters in college and one of their daughters is about to graduate. So I'm thinking they've been married maybe 23, 24 years or something like that. And the story is one of these like kind of character studies, um, like a fictional story that embodies a lot of real life elements. So in the story, Elizabeth has basically sacrificed, you know, her career and her desires to be a homemaker, to stay at home and raise her kids and to kind of be there to support Jack throughout his career. He is a former NFL football player who had an accident and so he was no longer able to play. Uh, but because I think he was drinking or something like that, he he just left a bad taste in everybody's mouth and was kind of like blackballed, you know, because a lot of times when athletes retire, you know, even in real life, they get to go on to um, do what is it, broadcasting or to go on to do commentating for the sport. And Jack wasn't able to do that. He was able to, you know, become like uh, the sports guy on little local news stations. So where they're currently living, that's what he does. But he is still not happy. He wants to get back to the limelight. He wants to get back, have his name out there where he feels like he's relevant. And I think that what, what the story essentially shows is how different maybe the midlife crisis is for a woman versus a man, especially, you know, a couple in their case that have been in a, a long-term marriage. Whereas uh, Elizabeth is at this fork in the road is like, who am I without, you know, everything that I've built my life around for the last 40, 50 years. If I don't have kids to raise, if my husband is never home, what is it I want? What is it I want for myself? And I think most women at that age are kind of going through like, um, a reinvention of sorts while Jack is having a hard time kind of fading into obscurity, you know, and retiring and kind of letting all of the limelight in the, you know, flashy lifestyle go. He wants another shot at that. And he does get a chance to do that. But this time around, Elizabeth decides, well, you just go ahead. You, you go ahead and you chase your dreams, continue to do that. This time I'm taking out time for me. And that is where, you know, the crust of the story, because you're like turning the pages going, oh, is this really it? Or are they going to find their way back to each other? Because it seems as they settle into a life without each other, they get a lot more comfortable with that life. And, you know, in some cases, they're a lot happier. But then they, they do, there are moments and times where they kind of think about this life that they've built and the friendship that they had, even, you know, within their marriage, and they really, really miss each other. So, you know, I'm not going to give away the ending or anything, but I just liked how the author, you know, had so much realism in this fiction book, you know, and I think sometimes to kind of find yourself, you have to let go of what's familiar. Then once you kind of regain, you know, that sense of self, that sense of self-worth, 
you know, it makes you potentially a better partner and maybe you can come back together or maybe you realize, you know, that was just a season in my life and it's no longer something that suits me or fits me or that's good for me. So I'm not going to tell you how Jack and Elizabeth's story ends, but they had a lot of ups and downs and just a lot of self-discovery and just and some moments that would make, you know, a reader think about their own lives and not, you know, even if you were married or not, you could be a single person. And I think some of the things that she writes about and the things that, that her characters go through um, is relatable in the sense of kind of like following your dreams or remembering things that you wanted to do and kind of asking yourself, why didn't I ever do that? And then maybe realizing now is the time to pursue it. So that was a really good story. And like I said, I love them and, you know, all the messy bits. None of it was easy on either side. I mean, and when you have like a marriage like that, you know, 24 years starts to uh, dissolve or break down or whatever, you don't think about the fallout, you know, uh, around you because, you know, I don't know. I had a, like, like their kids were adults, technically. I think their youngest daughter was 19 and the oldest, like 22 or something like that. And um, they were devastated, like when they learned that their parents had separated and I mean, I don't know. I feel like their parents were there for them the entire time they were growing up. Um, they were there in the sense that they were a family unit because their dad, like, you know, he was always kind of out of the picture working or hustling, trying to get his career and stuff jump started or, or way on games when he was playing football. But I guess it's just the familiar thing when, because for their children, I would imagine, that was a part of their identity. I come from a family. I come from a situation where my parents are together. And then if that breaks apart, then they have to also begin to question, well, who am I if I'm not, you know, this person? And that's what life is all about. It's all about evolution. It's all about reinvention because nothing stays the same. You know, the change is just inevitable. And it's just a matter of how <clears throat> you deal with that that's going to determine you know, your future outcome, you know, um, people can't stay who they once were. And I think that was a lot of the, the problem that Jack had, you know, he just didn't understand after 24 years, you know, he just couldn't understand why Elizabeth was, you know, acting all brand new. <laughs> like, you know, you've been supporting me. You've been like just being at home waiting for me when I get, you know, get off. Like, why is that changing now? Well, Jack, I mean, cut the lady some slack. 24 years is a long time to kind of just be holding up your ego. And it wasn't a like gripping page turner in the sense that, you know, like how most mystery or suspense books, it was a page turner in the sense that you're just like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Are they going to find their way back to each other? What is she going to do the thing? Is he going to get the job? Is, you know, you were interested from that perspective, but it was more of a slow burn, you know, with a lot of angsty moments. And the author also had uh, multiple points of view. Well, just two. It was, um, you know, Jack's point of view and Elizabeth's point of view. So you can kind of you know, get an idea of what each of them were was thinking or feeling. And it, it's funny because, you know, I know it's a book or whatever, but it's like, as the reader, we had more insight to the, to the marriage than the two of them because the, their communication had just kind of broken down. And I think that kind of happens over the years. If you feel like you're telling somebody something, but they're not actively listening. They're either like already formulating a response to what you're saying, or they think that you're just in a mood or they're thinking it's going to like, you know, uh, blow over or whatever. And I think that both of them had just gotten used to, um, each other like venting or saying things, but never really following through or, you know, the next day would be a different story or they would go get something to eat and it would all be over instead of maybe thinking, okay, this is like the sixth time he said that, or she keeps saying that that must mean something. And I think that's what happens with a lot of relationships, not only married people, but if you're, you know, uh, just a couple or in families or friends, um, a lot of times we don't actively listen to what people are saying because a lot of times they're telling us what they need. And then if they feel like they're not being heard, 
then eventually you just stop talking and you just, you know, you kind of go with the flow, but there's this, um, what is it? Resentment that festers and everything is a big blow up every time something happens, no matter how small. So a lot of that was also going on in the, in the uh, book. I think this would make a really good TV uh, adaptation, like for not like a series, you know, to watch on Netflix or Prime or Hulu or any of the millions of streaming services that are out there. And it would not surprise me if, you know, they started making this or if she's already had one that's been made into a, a TV drama or something. Let me know in the comments because I don't know why her name sounds so familiar to me. But anyway, Distant Shores by Kristen Hanna. A good read if you're looking for like some fiction that has some realism in it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have read Distant Shores, or like I said, if you know any of her other books that maybe have already been made into a TV show or a movie or something, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.